Hello students, welcome to Exergic Aptitude channel. Tell me about yourself or introduce yourself is one of the most commonly asked questions in any job interview. So whether you're sitting for your campus placements or you're a working professional looking to switch jobs or you have qualified for a national level entrance test and have been shortlisted for the final interview, this is a question that you must be prepared to face. Tell me about yourself introduce yourself or walk me through a resume. Now remember, this is a question that is asked in the beginning of the interview and this can set the tone for your entire interview. So it's important that you have your answer prepared and in this video, we will be looking at an outline for what your answer should be like. Remember, you are not supposed to copy the entire outline word by word. It is going to totally depend upon your educational qualification, your professional qualifications, the company that you are applying for, as well as the job that you are applying for. So customize this outline depending upon your situation, your requirements. In the end, we will also be looking at a sample introduction and cover the important tips that you must keep in mind for this particular question. So let's start. Now let's look at the starting statement. What should your starting statement have and what should it not have? It should have a good morning, a good afternoon or a good evening depending upon the time of the day. I'm sure you know any time before 12 noon is a good morning. From 12 noon to 4, 4.30 is a good afternoon. And after that, after 4.30 is a good evening. In the unlikely chance of your interview being conducted really late into the night like 8, 8.30, 9 you still say a good evening. You do not say good night, right? So you start off with a good morning, a good afternoon or a good evening. You follow it up with a thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to introduce myself or thank you for selecting me for the final round of the interview depending upon the kind of situation that you are in. After that, you move on to your personal details. What do I mean by personal details? I mean just your name no family details. There are many students who talk about their entire family when they are asked to introduce themselves. So my father is a lawyer, my mother is a teacher, my brother is a doctor and so on and so forth. All of that information is unnecessary, is not at all required and creates a negative impression. So you do not talk about your family, you do not mention your family details. What are you supposed to say instead? Just your name, maximum the place that you're from. I am Rahul, I am from Chennai. Remember, myself Rahul, myself Pooja, myself so and so is incorrect English. That is not the correct way to say. What are you supposed to say instead? I am, oh my name is, right? So I am Adam Smith, oh my name is Adam Smith. Let's look at the sample. Good morning. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to introduce myself. I am Adam Smith. I am from Waka, Goa. Right? So you have a good morning. You have a thank you. And you have your full name. My name is Adam Smith or I am Adam Smith. At the most, you can add the place that you're from. But you might skip it also. Now moving on to the body of your introduction. If you are a fresher without any work experience, then your focus must be on the educational qualifications that you have. Which means you talk about firstly the course that you have completed as well as the discipline in which you have done the course. So you've completed a B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering or a B.Tech in Civil Engineering and so on. You may or may not mention the name of your institution. So if the company has come to your campus for recruitment, then there is no need to mention the name of your institution. However, if you are going for an off-campus recruitment, then definitely you have to mention the name of your college. Also, you don't have to mention your CGPA. It is not compulsory. It is optional. Depending upon uh, what your CGPA is, if it is remarkably well, then you might mention it. Otherwise, you can skip it. So what are the things that you must necessarily include? You have to talk about some projects that you must have done in your engineering 
as well as the training programs that you might have taken. So in our engineering years, we have a final year project that is mandatory. We have to do some sort of a training in our second year, third year and so on. So you talk about all of those training programs. You talk about your final year project. You can also mention some certification courses that you might have done. Some kind of a training like AutoCAD that you might have got a certificate for or any industrial training that you might have done at an ITI or a CTTC and so on. And you can also mention some online courses that you might have completed from any website like Coursera. If you've done some courses, then you can talk about those as well. Remember, whatever you mention here, whatever projects, trainings, certification courses, etc. that you mention, you must have documentary proof for it. So if you have undergone a training, then you must have got a training completion certificate or some other form of a document and you must have that ready. So mention only those things for which you do have a documentary evidence. What should you not mention? You should not mention anything beyond your college years. So you should not talk about your school level performance or your class 10 or class 12 achievements. Similarly, if you're someone who is doing post-graduation and then sitting for an interview, you first talk about your post-graduation, you talk about the major that you've done in your PG or the thesis that you might have written and then move on to your graduation years and not beyond that, right? You don't talk about your school level accomplishments. So let us look at this sample example. I am pursuing a B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering from ABC Institute of Technology. My final year research project is on the design and manufacturing of solar powered seat sprayer machine. I have also completed a one month training at PQR Power Corporation. I have also represented my college at the All India ATV Meet 2017, which was held in Mumbai, right? So you're talking about your course as well as the discipline, the name of the institution, you definitely mention your final year project, which is mandatory. You talk about some training program that you might have undertaken apart from that project as well, like completed a one month training at so and so institute. Remember, whatever you mentioning, you must have the certificate of that as well. And if you have participated in any event, which is outside of your college, then you can mention that as well. Now, if you are someone with work experience, then you have to mention your professional qualifications. Instead of your graduation or post graduation, you talk about the work experience that you have. Remember, if you have more than one work experience, then you always talk about your most recent work experience first. So you start with your most recent work experience and then go backwards, right? So what are the things that you must absolutely mention? Obviously the name of the company and the designation or the post that you held, right? So you talk about the key responsibilities that you had and if you have any significant achievements in your tenure. Is it clear? Now suppose you have experience in a particular sector and you're applying for a job in a completely different sector, then you have to use it to your advantage by linking the two. So you say some sort of a skills that you might have learned in your present position and how that skill is going to help you in your future endeavor as well. So you connect your work experience with the profile that you're currently applying for. Let's look at this sample. I have been working as an operational engineer at XYZ Technologies for two years. So the tenure is very important. You also say for how long? For two years, for three years, or since 2017, since 2019 and so on. So I've been working as an operational engineer at XYZ Technologies Limited for two years. My key responsibilities included ensuring day-to-day -day operational efficiency, scheduling maintenance of machines, ensuring zero pendency at production line, ensuring quality control, and following all health and safety guidelines. Prior to that, I worked as an intern at MDF Tires Limited. I have completed a B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering from ABC Institute of 
technology. Now remember whatever you mentioned in your introduction, you must be in a position to answer if the interviewer cross questions. So for example, the interviewer may ask you what were the safety guidelines that were followed in your company, right? Or how did you ensure zero pendency at the production line? So you must be in a position to answer all of these questions. So be true to your responsibilities, be true to whatever work that you have done and frame it in a good manner, right? Again, as I said, suppose you have been working in a manufacturing firm for two years and now you're going and applying for an IT position or you're going and applying for a, a completely different sector, right? So you have to frame your answer in such a way that there is some sort of a link between the two. Now, if you cannot connect the works, then you connect the skills. For example, working with a manufacturing firm at ground level has made me realize the importance of the IT systems which ensure efficiency across departments. So in this line, you are showing your interest to work in the IT industry as you have seen how important it is in your current job. Is this clear? So again, we talk about our most recent work experience. Then we go backward. You may or may not have another work experience. That's fine. You mention your degree and then you talk about some skill that you have learned in your current position which will be helpful to the profile that you are applying for. After that you can talk about your hobbies or your passions or any extracurricular activity that you engage in. This is the time where you can also refer to your college fest or any tech fest that you might have participated in. And you can also talk about your hobbies like singing, dancing, reading and so on and so forth. Remember, it is very important that you don't just say that I like dancing, but you also make a kind of connection between your hobby and the job that you're applying for. So you can talk about what all has that particular habit taught you, what are the skills that that particular hobby has inculcated in you. For example, I am a voracious reader. Reading makes me calm and it is a kind of meditation for me. I also have a blog where I review the books I read. I feel this has made my communication skills stronger. So you're not just saying that I like to read, but you also are emphasizing on the skills that you have gained because of this hobby of yours, right? If you don't have any such hobby, then you can talk about some other passion. For example, I'm passionate about cars. I have participated in state level ATV championships. This has given me the opportunity to understand the importance of being a team player. So in this line, not only are you talking about your hobby and passion, you are also mentioning competition that you have participated in. Also, you're bringing to light a characteristic about yourself that you have learned the importance of being a team player. So this is a section where you can be a little bit creative. You can frame your sentence in such a manner that it throws light not only on the hobby or the passion, but also the skills that you have learned from it. Now remember that you have to be true to the interviewer. You have to be true to yourself. For example, if you say that reading is my hobby, and when the interviewer asks you, what is the last book that you read? Or who is your favorite author? Or why do you like this person uh, so much? Or why do you like this particular work so much? Then you must be in a position to answer him or her, right? Finally, we come to the closing statement. To make your closing statement effective, you must read about the company as well as the profile that you are applying for. So if you are a fresher and a company has come to your college for recruitment, you must read a little bit about the company as well as the profile that they are recruiting for. Similarly, if you are switching jobs or you have qualified for the PSU through a national level test, again, you must have read about the big company and you must also be a little bit aware of the profile that they are hiring for. So let's look at this sample for uh, a campus placement. I wish to work as an engineer trainee in an innovative market leading company such as yours where I can learn industry relevant skills and create positive impact. 
So this is how the closing statement can be for someone without work experience for a fresher. If you do have work experience, then you have to add, although I enjoy my current position, I feel I'm ready to take on a more challenging assignment in a bigger company. I wish to work in a reputed organization like yours, where I can utilize my skills and experience and create a positive impact, right? Again, you have to customize this completely on the basis of what qualifications you have, what skills you have, the company you're applying for, as well as the profile or the role that you are applying for. You end this with, that is all from my side, thank you. So this is important, this is what you end the entire introduction with. That is all from me, thank you. Is this clear? So let us look at this sample introduction for someone who is a fresher. Good morning. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to introduce myself. I am Adam Smith. I'm pursuing a B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering from ABC Institute of Technology. My final year project is on the design and manufacturing of so-and-so. I have also completed a one-month training at so-and-so. I am enthusiastic about cars. I have represented my college at the All India ATV Meet 2017, which was held in Mumbai. I have also participated in state level ATV championships. This has not only strengthened my knowledge of automobiles, but has also made me a team player. I wish to work as an engineer trainee in an innovative market leading company such as yours, where I can learn industry relevant skills and create positive impact. That is all from me. Thank you. Right? So this is the outline of what your introduction must be like. Let us look at a sample introduction for someone who has work experience. Good morning. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to introduce myself. I am Adam Smith. I have been working as an operational engineer at XYZ Technologies Limited since 2019. My key responsibilities included so and so. Prior to that, I worked as an intern at MDF Tires Limited for a year. I have completed a B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering from in this Institute of Technology. Although I enjoy my current position, I feel I'm ready to take on a more challenging assignment in a bigger company and I wish to work in a reputed organization such as yours where I can utilize my skills and experience. I am a voracious reader. Reading makes me calm. It's kind of meditation for me and it has made my communication skills stronger. That's all from me. Thank you. So we have discussed the outline of your answer. Now it's up to you to prepare that answer according to your educational qualifications your professional qualifications, your hobbies, your interests, what company are you applying for, what role are you applying for. There are some key points or key tips that you must keep in mind before you prepare that answer. Let's see what those are. First and foremost, your introduction should be short and crisp. It should not be more than one minute long. That's enough. One minute is a lot of time to introduce yourself. So it has to be short, it has to be to the point. Secondly, it has to be authentic and it has to be credible, right? As I said, after every step, whatever you say in your introduction, you must have documentary evidence for the same. So if you have participated in so-and-so, you must have proof of it. If you have done a project in so-and-so, you must have proof of it. If you've done a training somewhere, you must have proof of it and so on. Thirdly, your introduction should be unique. Do not copy word to word from any source that you find on the internet. Be creative. This is a blessing in disguise if the interview asks you to introduce yourself as you can steer the conversation in whichever direction that you want to. So if you talk about your recent work experience, you are asking the interviewer to ask you questions about it. If you talk about your projects and you want the interviewer to ask you about that, if you're talking extensively about your hobbies and your skills, then an interviewer will ask you regarding that. So this is a blessing in disguise. Be creative and have a unique introduction ready. Now, when the interviewer does ask you to introduce yourself, you're supposed to sound enthusiastic and confident, but not boastful. 
right so you have to strike that balance between being enthusiastic and positive about your introduction but not cross the line into being proud or egoist or boastful remember that the interviewer is after all testing your communication skills your attitude how well are you able to communicate and the interviewer does not care about some grammatical errors that you might make so do not worry about your grammatical errors or do not worry about your language issues be confident be enthusiastic maintain eye contact with everyone so generally you will have three to four people who will be taking the interview and if any one of them asks you introduce yourself you are not supposed to just look at that person you should look at everyone while answering also voice modulation is important so don't just say the entire thing in one go try to say it in a nice story format last but not the least you must prepare the answer to this particular question do not think that you will be able to make up an answer at the last moment or when the interviewer asks you the question in the interview room prepare your answer well in advance by preparing i don't mean that you mug up the entire thing jot down the key points jot down the greetings that you absolutely must say make a list of all the trainings or the projects that you want to mention and all of that that you don't want to mention right so have a mental map or have an outline of how your answer should be like prepare in advance practice it two to three times and you will be good to go i hope you find this video helpful if you have any doubts or any questions you can leave them in the comment section below thank you so much for watching all the best